You are here to learn about e-cigarettes and vape pens, but it's also important to understand the history of the tobacco industry, since many of these strategies being used by e-cigarette and vape pen manufacturers were those used and are still being used by cigarette companies. New focus on increasing nicotine use with new and popular nicotine delivery devices, including e-cigarettes and vape pens, and tobacco smoking causes around 480,000 deaths every year, yet people still decide to smoke in part because the tobacco industry has become very good at hiding these risks of cigarette smoking. Let's take a look at the historical context and some of the tobacco industry's tactics. Cigarettes, tobacco leaves rolled in thin paper and smoked, have been around since the 9th century, originating in North, Central, and South America. Cigarettes gained international popularity in the 1800s as global exploration began. They then became widespread in the 20th century. As tobacco became more common across the globe, new technology made cigarette production easier. In the 1800s, a cigarette making machine was invented, allowing the tobacco industry to begin and grow. As production increased, so did consumption of cigarettes. In the US, cigarette use often fluctuated during major national events. Once cigarettes became easier to make, tobacco companies began to develop and expand on the cigarette market. Many of these original companies are still around today. These companies used advertising strategies to convince people to become their customers. What do you notice about these ads? Doctors making stronger claims about the lack of risk associated with cigarettes? Even figure two cites a specific number of physicians who agree with the claim, luckies are less irritating. Many tobacco companies tried to convince their customers that cigarettes were not only harmless, but good for your health. How believable are these ads to you? In reality, from the late 1920s to the 1930s, tobacco companies hired actors to play doctors and dentists to mislead the public. Just like the doctors in these ads, the information about the cigarettes could be misleading or even completely made up. Based on what you know about how tobacco affects health, where would you guess these specific facts came from? Most of our early research on tobacco wasn't done by universities, hospitals, or the government. It was actually done by the Tobacco Institute, which was funded by the tobacco industry. In the mid-1930s, a new advertising campaign for Philip Morris referred to research conducted by physicians. In one ad, the company claimed that after prescribing Philip Morris brand cigarettes to patients with irritated throats, every case of irritation cleared completely or definitely improved. After the launch of this series of advertisements, along with others referring to proof of superiority, Philip Morris became a major cigarette brand. In this example, and many others, misleading the public really paid off for tobacco companies. What are your thoughts about the messages here? Early on in the history of cigarettes, it was considered unladylike to smoke in public until tobacco companies realized that marketing to women would get them new customers. Women then became the focus of new ad campaigns. These campaigns often relied on sexist messages to convince women to smoke to be more modern, fashionable, thin, and smart. Do you think these ads would be effective today? Men were also not spared from being targets of ad campaigns. Numerous ad campaigns use hyper-masculine imagery to try and get the public to associate smoking with the tough guy persona. Well-known celebrities were even paid to endorse different tobacco brands to make them more appealing. Men in cigarette ads were made to seem manly, cool, and attractive to women. Let's look at some examples of cigarette ads that may not have been intended for adults only. What do you think the industry's message was in the cartoon and ads? To try and appeal to kids and teens? Trying to hook customers at a young age? What they were actually doing is trying to have young people connect to their brands early in life. Now let's look at actual quotes from the tobacco industry. Today's teenager is tomorrow's potential regular customer, and the overwhelming majority of smokers first begin to smoke while still in their teens. The base of our business is the high school student. In fact, 88% of smokers are exposed to nicotine by the time they're 18 years old. Pass that window and they're way less likely to start smoking. Tobacco companies know this and use their ads to find new customers. 
Early tobacco advertising was really effective. Smoking became more and more common. Smoking rates climbed until 1964, the year the Surgeon General published a report that explained many of the harmful effects of smoking. Up until this point, the public suspected smoking may have been bad for their health, and this groundbreaking report confirmed it. After the release of the report, trends in smoking began to decrease. Why do you think this report had such a large impact? The report was impactful because the tobacco's industry manipulation was exposed and accurate information from a trusted source was finally available to the public. The decline in smoking rates didn't happen overnight. Many public policies were put into place to discourage people from smoking. In 1965, the Federal Cigarette Labeling and Advertising Act required large warning labels on cigarette cartons. In 1971, the Surgeon General proposed a smoking ban in public places, and in 1998, advertising targeted at young people was prohibited, and higher taxes were placed on cigarettes to discourage use. These kind of policies helped to fight back against the big advertising push from large tobacco companies. Tobacco control policies were put into place not only to encourage people who smoked to quit, but also to protect those who do not smoke. The truth about the dangers of secondhand smoke became more well known because of ads like these. Secondhand smoke is smoke that is exhaled or comes from tobacco burning products. This smoke can cause danger for anyone who inhales the smoke, even if they are not the ones smoking. Even pets can be harmed from secondhand smoke. Since 1964, about 2,500,000 non-smokers have died from health problems caused by exposure to secondhand smoke, and many others face asthma and heart attacks. Why do you think these types of messages are effective? In 1999, the U.S. Department of Justice filed suit against the cigarette companies for violating civil provisions of the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organization Act also known as RICO, and other laws. This same law was used in the 1970s to prosecute the mafia and others who engaged in organized crime. In 2006, U.S. District Court Judge Gladys Kessler convicted the big cigarette companies and their trade and scientific groups of forming an illegal racketeering enterprise to defraud the American people. The court ordered the cigarette companies to publish corrective statements telling the public that they had lied about the dangers of smoking, secondhand smoke, and nicotine addiction. The court also prohibited them from challenging the evidence that these statements are true, which is why the companies no longer do so. Judge Kessler stated, the evidence in this case clearly establishes that defendants have not ceased engaging in unlawful activity. Their continuing conduct misleads consumers in order to maximize defendants' revenues by recruiting new smokers, the majority of whom are under the age of 18, preventing current smokers from quitting, and thereby, thereby sustaining the industry. Do you think it was fair to treat tobacco executives like mob bosses? Why or why not? This may seem like ancient history. But as you may have noticed, tobacco companies aren't the type to give up easily. Tobacco industry has created new marketing techniques to bring in new cigarette smoking customers. And the industry has developed new products and advertised them using their old ad techniques. This wraps up today's lesson on the history of tobacco companies.